this event and making this possible from the houses from the house from the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we all have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is from the muqaddar of him this has been written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 50,000 years before the creation of everything 50,000 years before the creation of every single thing we all have gathered here to gain knowledge we all have gathered here to gain knowledge Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says لَمْ نِشْكُرِ النَّاسِ وَلَمْ نِشْكُرِ اللَّهِ and those who don't thank people will not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore I would like to thank the Masjid Khalilullah and the committee members and Sheikh Abdul Hazib Madani Rahimahullah Rahimahullah can be used even for the person who is alive and dead so don't take it wrong for making this event and recommending to start the English Durus in this masjid and we had meeting uh, uh, 10 days before and we were supposed to start with some uh, random Durus but I suggested, suggested them to start with some kind of books therefore we will, where we will be dealing with a lot of things in detail about Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a purpose isn't it and that, that purpose is to worship him alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ and verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us the jinn and the mankind to worship him to worship him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Allah يُخْرِجُكُمْ مِنْ بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا فَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ سَمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah has brought you out Allah has brought you out from the wombs of your mother La ta'alamuna shay'a when you did not know anything you are ignorant فَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ and Allah has given you the sight the hearing and the heart لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ so that you will be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now all these things that Allah has given us is an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this these things has to be utilized to worship him not to disobey him isn't it these are all amana so that you will be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa in shakartum and if you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more Allah will increase your provisions Allah will increase your taqwa wa in kafartum wa innahu adabun alim really if you disobey Allah is severe in punishment severe in punishment we all have gathered here to utilize these things that Allah has given us in a right way to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to know what he is asking us to do to know how to lead the life to utilize these things in a proper way and when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will love him more for example if you love somebody if you like somebody what will you do you would like to know that person more and more isn't it so when you want to know who Allah is you need to know his deen you need to know his deen and before all these things Allah has given us and blessed us with Iman blessed us with Iman Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one of the hadith and this is this hadith is sahih inna allaha yuti ad dunya man yuhib wa man la yuhib Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give this dunya this worldly life to whomsoever he likes to whomsoever he dislikes وَلَا يُؤْتِي الْإِيمَانَ إِلَّا مَا يُحِبْ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give iman except for those whom he loves and this iman Allah has blessed us it's not an easy thing it's not an easy thing this iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is not an easy thing you can't buy this iman can you buy this iman? you can't buy this iman even if you have to sell the entire property you have even if you have to go through anything you won't be given this iman you can't buy this iman and this iman Allah has given you Allah has chosen you for what? to be the worshipper of Allah to be the worshipper that is proud Muslim what is proud Muslim? we don't worship anything besides Allah our sujood, ruku is only for Allah you come, you put dagger on my throat 
knife on my throat i will not make ruku or sujood except to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter whatsoever and that is the power of iman and that is the power of iman and kufr that's a distinguished difference between kufr and iman and allah has given us that iman allah has given us that iman and we need to preserve this iman and how do i how do we preserve this iman how do we preserve by gaining knowledge by gaining knowledge allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran fa'lam annahu la ilaha illa allah wa astaghfir li dhanbik and whom is he addressing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our nabina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of the mankind the the one who came to fulfill the religion to complete the religion the best of the anbiya and rusul and the best of the man ever walked on the face of the earth allah is telling him fa'lam and know that there is no god worthy worship besides allah and fastaghfir li dhanbik and seek forgiveness from your sins seek forgiveness from your sins what about you and me allah is ordering rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa'lam know that there is no god worthy worship besides allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another words allah says ya muhammad wa qur rabbi zidni ilma and say o oh allah increase my knowledge what about you and me ignorance will take you away from islam ignorance will take you away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge will bring close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge will bring close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that alf abidin khayr min alf uh, alf abidin uh, sorry wahid al alim khayr min alf abidin one alim one scholar is better than 1000 worshipers why when a scholar stands in prayer he is certain he is, he knows what he is doing but an abid because of lack of knowledge he doesn't know what exactly he is doing isn't it so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given the certainty allah has given the certainty for a scholar he is recognizing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is offering salah he knows what is wajib in that what are arkan in that what are mustahabbat in that what are mustahabbat al qawliya wal fa'liya in that isn't it that's why he is better than a normal worshipper that makes the difference between a scholar and a normal man allah raises the standards of the scholars that's why they are known as warathatul anbiya the inheritors of prophets imam ahmad ibn, Him- ibn hanbal rahimahullah he said that الناس الى العلم احوج منهم من الشراب والاكل the human beings are more in need of knowledge than eating and drinking than eating and drinking لان الرجل يحتاج الى الطعام مره او مرتين في اليوم for a man requires to eat once or twice in a day once or twice in a day and he is satisfied with that ولكن يحتاج الى العلم عدد الانفاس بل هي نيدز نوليدج مور ذان ذات مور ذان ذات لوك ات ذا ستيتمنت امام الشافعي رحمه الله هي سيز ذات ذا نوليدج از ا نور فروم الله سبحانه وتعالى ذا نوليدج از ذا لايت فروم الله سبحانه وتعالى اند ذس لايت ويل نوت بي جيفن ابون ا بيرسون هو از ا سينر هو از ا سينر may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our affairs we all sin we all have to rectify every day nobody are free nobody are masoom and how do we rectify our sins it's not like sinning again and again but you have to feel guilty of what you're doing you have to feel guilty you do you commit sin but you have to feel guilty for what you have done you have to ask forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to forgive you have to ask forgiveness for, for upon whom you have done dhulm this is how you feel guilty and you ask forgiveness and this noor this light allah has said this is noor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will not give this noor upon the person who is a sinner and this knowledge is very important why i am reminding you is because before starting the real session real book i want to remind you about the imp- importance of knowledge importance of knowledge 
Because the best of the knowledge Allah has created is in this world. And there are many kinds of knowledge in this world. Engineering. Uh, every same kind of knowledge. Uh, medical. And we have different kinds of knowledge. But among the or among the knowledge, the Ashraf al ulum the best of the knowledge is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you go to the grave, you will not be asked about engineering or medical or any other thing. You will be asked, Marrabbuk. And when you do not have knowledge who your Lord is, you will not be able to answer. It will be asked, Man Nabiyuk. Who is your Prophet? When you do not have the knowledge, you will not be able to answer. Then you will, it will be asked, you will be asked, Madinuk, what is a religion? When you do not have knowledge, you will not be able to answer. As I told you, the knowledge is opposite of jahal, ignorance. And when you are certain about this knowledge, nobody can come and tell you this is wrong and that is wrong. You have the knowledge, you are certain about it. And this is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam ibn Thaymin rahimahullah, he says that gaining knowledge is from the lofty form of worship is from the lofty forms of worship and you will find the shaitan hindering you from this from gaining this because after faraid the ulama they say after faraid gaining knowledge is better than standing in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the night it is better than nawafi how many of us are gaining knowledge how many of us are very serious about to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? What our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come to this dunya and taught us. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبُلُ لَفِي ضَلَالِ الْمُبِينَ And it is from the mercy of Allah, it is from the father of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a messenger. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from amongst ourselves yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkikum wa yuhallimuhum al-kitaba wal-hikmah reciting the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching you the hikmah teaching, the, teaching you the, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wisdom of the ahadith and quran wa in kanu min qablu la fi dalal mubin before because you are in a plain error before that and when you gain knowledge will you be ignorant? will you be ignorant? you will never be ignorant when you gain knowledge. One of these ulama, salaf from the salaf, they say that لا خير في من لا يحب العلم There is no khair in a person when he does not like the knowledge. There is no khair in him when he do not like to gain knowledge. When we get up every day, we go to the school, we have finished schooling, some of the students here, some of them have reached you know, old days, some of them are shabab, youth. When we reach, when we have been studying of the worldly stuff day and night for this worldly pleasure, pleasure just to aim, just to earn and this earning will not be taken to the grave but what will you take to the grave? The ilm that you have gained and that ilm what you have taken, what you have gained when you share that ilm among the people that will stay along with you in the grave until Yawm al You know what is Yawm al Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away when 1440 years before. Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they followed him. They are all in the grave. They left us this knowledge. They are in the grave for 1440 years. But whatever they have left us, for us, still we are studying. And we will die. We will go to the grave. And generation who comes after this, they all keep studying. And whatever knowledge you gain and you spread that knowledge among the people, you will be rewarded until Yawm al Qiyamah. If you, gain, if you uh, guide one person and that person guides 10 of them, those 10 of them will guide hundreds of them. Those hundreds will uh, you know, uh, you know, convey to the thousands of millions until Yawm al Qiyamah. In the grave, you are rewarded for that. And what are we doing? Are we taking this knowledge seriously? How many of us are strictly and serious about this? Ulama told us when we were studying in Makkah that لا يُنَالُ عِلْمَ بِرَاحَةِ الْجِسْمِ You can't gain knowledge by gaining comfort. You have to break your backs. You have to take time of it. Everybody is busy. 
If you say, I am busy, there is nobody who is busy, nobody who is free. Everybody is busy with something or the other. But what is important is how much time you take out every day. How many pages you read? Five pages, how much time it takes? Five, five minutes, ten minutes. When you read, keep reading it. You gain knowledge and you will be in a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. There are people who say that there are no ulama. There are people who say that you can't sit with the ulama. There are people who say that you can't gain knowledge. There are some people here. If you come across such kind of people, believe me, they are nothing but the followers of Khawarij. Stay away from these people. Any person comes to you and say with negative things to you, stay away from that person. Stay away from negative things. Stay, stay away from negative people. You want to improve your life? Stay away from these negative people. You will be in a level. As I told you, this knowledge, gaining knowledge is not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's not for everybody. It is only for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. وَمَنْ يُرِذِ اللَّهُ بِخَيْرٍ يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ And whomever Allah wants good, what does it give? What does it give? The understanding of the religion. You all have come here from different parts of Bangalore, sitting here, giving one hour time, half an hour time, whatever it is, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has muqaddar made this event. And for everything you will be rewarded. And not only rewarded, you will be forgiven, your sins will be forgiven. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, if there is a majlis, if a person is walking in front of him, in front of the majlis, and he her, hears a, sh- a shaykh sitting and teaching, and he comes and sits in the majlis, he will be forgiven from his sins. Man salaka tariqan yaltamisuhu bihi ilman, sahala allahu tariqan bihi ilal jannah. And whoever treads path in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gaining knowledge, Allah will make his pathway to Jannah easy. This is the pathway of what? Jannah. Allah Akbar. Allah has given us questions. Allah has given us answers. We just have to follow it. It is not an exam that you are writing, you know, engineering or anything. You know, you don't know what is the answer. You don't know what is the question. But Allah has given you the question. Allah has given you the solution as well. You do this, you will get this. You will, you do this, you will get this. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made it this dunya before he went. This, this deen of Allah subhanahu wa taala as clear as the day, as clear as night. Is it not easy? Allah has made this religion easy for us. Why are we making it difficult? Somebody wants to become knowledgeable. Somebody wants to become scholar. Don't expect you to become scholar in one day or two days. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah become, did not become Ibn Taymiyyah when he was born. He became Ibn Taymiyyah by, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by breaking his back. Imam al nawi did not become Imam al nawi by birth. Imam Ibn al Qayyim did not become Imam Ibn al Qayyim by birth. No holy person, no person on the face of the earth becomes scholar by birth. They break their backs and they gain knowledge and they will reach that level. The more you give time to Allah, the more you understand Allah and the more you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you stay away from all kinds of sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of the religion. Let me not go more in detail about the knowledge because this is not the session of knowledge but I want to go into the session. Before any amal to be accepted by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are two things required. Number one, al-ikhlas, sincerity. Number two, muta'bah. That is, following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-ikhlas, sincerity. When you gain knowledge, you have to be sincere. The ulama mentioned in the kitab, Zainul Abideen. Who is Zainul Abideen? From the grandchildren of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is said that, whenever he wants to perform umrah or hajj, whenever he goes to Meikat, and he makes talbiyah, he makes niya, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, he faints down. He faints. Again he get up. Again he is fainting down. Unconscious. He, he, he gains consciousness. Then people ask, what happened to you? Zainul Abideen, the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that, I am going to Makkah, the blessed city of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am going to perform. And I am saying, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. I fear that I am not sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of the khawf and fear, he falls unconscious. He falls unconscious. Who is he? You and me? The grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is mentioned in the kutub. If you read the different seerah of ulama, 
it is mentioned in the surah that people used to make wudu to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they became pale they get khawf on their faces people ask why are you scared they say I'm standing, I'm going to stand in front of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows about me and who knows my inner self. Don't I should be scared of Allah? Don't I should be scared of Allah? He knows every single thing. You and about you and about what you're going to do. And their face become pale. This is from the fear of Allah. Gaining knowledge will it make you humble. Gaining knowledge will make you fear of Allah. Gaining knowledge will have the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gaining, gaining knowledge will make you tawakkul in, 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 in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gaining knowledge will, moreover, forgive your sins. And as I told you, sincerity is very important. Sincerity is very important. It is mentioned in one of the hadith that a sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die in the battlefield. And he said, I will give you ganima. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I did not come for ganima, for booty of war, but I came to die in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that, Oh Allah, I want to die the way I want the arrow to hit my throat. Hit my throat and I want to die this way. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told, if you are truthful to Allah, and Allah will be truthful to you. After the war, they found the Sahabi dead in the similar way. The, the, the arrow was pierced in his throat. Are you truthful? Are we truthful? How much are we truthful? Allah Akbar. You want to be truthful? Come back to Quran and Sunnah. You want to gain the mercy of Allah? Know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You will gain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah musta'an. So this is very important. Ikhlas is very important. That's why to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, to know what haram and halal is, to know what is mustahab, what is makru, what is muba, what is mustahabbat in the religion, we are going to learn certain ahadith which talks about tahara, purification, that purifies your soul, purifies your body. We are going to study about detail, minute matters of salah, minute matters of siyam, minute matters of zakat, hajj, nikah, hudud, business transactions, manners, everything that we are going to study, inshaAllah, in this book, Bulug al-Maram, Min Adillat al-Ahkam. In the beginning, I told you that we want to have a general durus. We had a meeting with the committee members. But I suggested, no, I want to teach the people the book. And this is the way of Salaf, teaching the books and giving them the knowledge. Durus, lectures, many things are available on YouTube. There are many speakers, but you will not find where you'll be, you've been taught the books. We studied in Mecca. I studied in Mecca for seven years. We are taught books there, we are not taught lectures, some kind of talks, we are taught books, we study books, we have research. That's, what, that's how you gain knowledge and this is the way of Salaf. That's why I have chosen this book, Bulug al-Maram, Min Adillat al-Ahkam. What is Bulug al-Maram? Now we are getting into the topic now, inshallah. Bulug al-Maram is a book which consists of many ahadith which is collected by Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah. You must have heard about this name. Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Inshallah, short while we will be coming to know who Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah is briefly. Bulug al-Maram is that book which consists of a hadith of, from different books. From Bukhari, from Sahih Muslim. That is Kutub al-Sita. Ibn Majah, Al-Tirmidhi, Al-Nasai, uh, Abu Dawood and many other books, Ibn Khuzayma, Sahih Ibn Habban, Muwatta Al-Malik, many, Abu Ruwah, Rahuya, there are many muhaddithin. And Imam Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he's collected this book and he made abwaab, certain uh, chapters in this book, and he made certain subsections like Kitab Tahara, for example, the book of purification, Kitab Salah, the book of Salah, Kitab Siyam, Kitab Zakat, Kitab Al-Hajj, 
كتاب النقر كتاب الحدود كتاب التجارة كتاب البيع like this he made this book collected around 2000 hadith from all the books and he came he made this book and inshallah we are going to study this matan the text in detail about the matters of daily routine that we are doing we all offer salah isn't it but we do not know what is mustahab in that what is arkan in that what are wajibat in that and we all you know uh, clean ourselves but we do not know how to clean do not know with what to clean what are the ways to clean all these things are explained clearly in this book inshallah and we are going to take this lessons and we are going to start with kitab at-tahara it has happened during time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that one of the sahabi um, salman al-farsi rahimahullah he was walking radiyallahu anhu he was walking in the street of madina so the kuffar so the kuffar they went and started ridiculing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and insulting Islam. You know what was insult? Ya Salman, we heard that you are Muhammad, your prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches you how to clean after going to urination. You know what Salman radhiyallahu an response was? He said proudly, yes, our Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches that every minute matter. He was proud about it. He didn't feel sad. He didn't feel bad. He was proud about what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi taught us. As I told you, he has left us everything clean and clear. Only that thing is that we need to accept it and follow it. Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, who is he? Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, his original name is Ahmed ibn Ali. Ahmed ibn Ali. Al Ibn Hajar Al Asqalani. Ibn Hajar is known as known famously known as Ibn Hajar. Why? Because Ibn Hajar is from his his, his uh, grandfather's name. He was quite famous. So he was known as Ibn Hajar. And Asqalan is a place where uh, it's a city or a town in Palestine, in old Palestine. And uh, Ibn Hajar Al Asqalani was born in 770 73 Hijri in 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 Cairo city, Cairo. in Egypt and when he was 4 years old when he was 4 years old his father passed away his yatim he is in yatim orphan and this is the case with most of the scholars you see imam bukhari you see ibn taymiyah you see imam ahmed al hanbal you see most of the ulama most of the scholars their parents their father passed away when they were young 4 to 5 years old and yatim the word yatim you know the word yatim in islam is termed when not when uh, when both the parents passed away it is termed when the father father of the child passed away mother is alive but the father is dead so that child is called as yatim orphan but in english term terminology yatim means both mother and father are no more he is called as orphan but islamically it is only the father only the father however Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahimahullah when we know we need to know when we studying about the book we need to know who the author who the author is isn't it so Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahimahullah when he was 5 years old 5 years old he was put into a school uh, uh, during those times we don't have schools like this but there is there was something called kutab where uh, you know a person will be taught how to read and write how to read and write and this was even there around 50 70 years back in if you go to saudi arabia and mauritania and different african countries you will find even now sometimes some of the countries will find kutab kutab means where you will be taught how to read and write uh, not specifically those who teach you there are scholars but they are the ones who knows how to read and write they know how to recite quran with makhraj with tajweed and they teach you that imam ibn hajar rahimahullah he gained knowledge he started uh, learning writing and and uh, uh, memorizing the quran at very young age at the age of 5 in one day he memorized surah maryam in one day he memorized surah maryam and not only that he started memorizing many kutub by age of 9 he memorized the complete quran along with quran he memorized alfiya ibn iraq iraqi imam al iraqi there is alfiya alfiya is something called there are thousand poetry uh, poetic verses in alfiya there are many alfiya alfiya imam ibn malik 
alfia uh, you know cot there are many alfia this alfia talks about different signs of knowledge and alfia ibn iraq iraqi okay imam al iraqi this particular thing talks about the mustalah hadith the signs of the hadith he memorized it when he was 9 years old how many 1000 verses 1000 and not only that there is a book called al hawiya sagir by imam al shafi rahimahullah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in quran wa laqad yassarna al quran li dhikri fa hal min mudhakir isn't it we have made easy to memorize quran we have made easy to memorize quran but he started memorizing the the aqwal the books of the ulama the books of the ulama imam al shafi it's like nothing like he wrote by himself and he started memorizing those books very easily so, you, so that you can understand how much knowledgeable and how strong his memory was and he went to mecca that's where he met uh, imam al iraqi and he was inspired by him he studied hadith from him and uh, he started compiling many books and from among his books you must have heard fath al bari how many of you heard fath al bari the sharh of sahih bukhari it is written by imam ibn hajar asqalani rahimahullah 16 to 17 volumes no 18 volumes different editions has got different volumes he wrote this book subhanallah along with that he wrote is al isaba fi tamiz al sahaba and this is almost like 15 to 16 volumes i remember when he talk about this book when we were in the first year of kulliya in kulliya al haram in college of haram in makkah one of the mashayikh gave us uh, a project the project is this particular book al isaba fi tamiz al sahaba talks about this the sahaba radiyallahu anhum and who are known mashhur famous and gayra mashhur who are not famous and who are the narrators from the sahaba radiyallahu anhum and this is about how many volumes 16 volumes and our sheikh gave us the project that take two names take two names from this book al isaba and it has to match with another book that book presently i am not able to remember which uh, the the author of the book ibn hazm or somebody it has to match with that for example if you are selecting a sahabi name sahabi from this book you need to collect the bio data uh, the the, the uh, bio data of the sahabi and you need to bring the page number and the the rakam you know there are thousands and millions of you know uh, sahaba radiyallahu anhum in that kutub you need to take any one and you go to the other book bring another name from it and you need to bring make a project wallahi ladhim we were in maktab maktab al haram if you if you go went to haram masjid al haram you must have seen the maktaba the, the library i spent 3 to 4 days in 4 days continuous from morning to evening to get one name found one name now the challenge is to get the same name from another book and we got the name we made the project it took 4 days after kulliya we used to go there and sit entire day till night come back in the morning again finally we found alhamdulillah we submitted the project so here what i'm trying to say is he collected this the names of sahaba and the bio date the biography of the sahaba radiyallahu anhum who are mashhur wa ghayra mashhur how many volumes 16 volumes you can understand and this, that's why he is called as al hafiz al hafiz ibn hajar hafiz nowadays means the one who memorizes quran that's what we know isn't it but olden days hafiz is not the one who memorizes quran hafiz was given the name hafiz was given to the person who memorized Two lakh, one lakh ahadith. Some of the ulama they say million ahadith. Hafiz Imam Al Zahabi, rahimahullah, he memorized millions of hadith, millions. Imam Al Bukhari, rahimahullah, how many hadith he memorized? Four lakh, five lakh ahadith. Memorizing hadith, not the text. Inna mala amalu bi niyat wa inna mali kulli mirin ma nawa. Not the hadith, not the text. They memorized with the sanad, with the sanad. What is the chain? the chain that goes to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they memorize with the chain and they know they do, they, they, they do they don't have any mistake in that that's why they called hafiz that was the memory that was allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to imam ibn hajar al asqalani rahimahullah imam al shawqani rahimahullah imam al shawqani you should be knowing one of the great scholars from yemen around 150 uh, 180 200 years before he passed away the author of nailul awtar he said that The, the most knowledgeable in the field of hadith is Imam Ibn Hajar and Hafiz al-Iraqi 
Hafiz al Iraqi, the teacher of Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he himself said that I have never seen among my students who is more knowledgeable than Imam Ibn Hajar. Imam Ibn Hajar. And he became Imam and he became the Qadi, he became the leader of Muslimin. Leader, this is not the Amir or the Khalifa, the one who leads the Muslimin. And he passed away when he was at, at 852 Hijri uh, in the month of Dhul Qaeda. Uh, he was affected with some kind of uh, disease and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take, took his soul and the legacy that he has left us the legacy that he has left us Allahu Akbar even now we are reading his books several hundred years passed away but still we are reading his books now going into the main uh, kitab we are studying kitab Bulug al-Maram what is that? Bulug al-Maram min adillatil ahkam Bulug al maram what is bulug means attaining achievement attaining or achievement al maram means goal al maram means goal achieving the goal achieving the goal min adillatil ahkam from the rules and regulations that is laid in islam that is laid in islam so imam ibn hajar al iskalani rahimahullah he the first book that he has made in this Bulug al-Maram is Kitab al-Tahara Kitab al-Tahara the book of purification the book of purification if you see other kutub you will find Kitab al-Ilm if you, you will find Kitab al-Salah you will find many other Kitab kutub which is started by the ulama but here Imam Ibn Hajar and this is from the Ada of the Muhaddithin that they start Kitab with Tahara why Tahara? can anybody answer me? What is the meaning of Tahara? Tahara is, means purification. What is the meaning of purification? Why it is so important? Tell me. Can you answer? Exactly. Without purification, the Salah or some of the Ibadat are not, accept, which are not accepted. So we need to know how do we purify ourselves? How do we purify ourselves? That's why he started with the book Kitab Tahara. Tahara means purification. The basic purification of a Muslim is to purify himself from shirk. From shirk. Inna mal mushrikoon najas. Really the mushrikin are najas. Are impure. Impure in the sense they are not impure by their body. They are not impure by their clothes. No. They are impure because of the shirk. Because of the shirk. So we need to purify ourselves from shirk. But that purification we are not talking about here we are talking about that purification which makes you to offer salah which make you, makes you to offer salah ulama rahimahumullah they say that the definition of tahara the definition of tahara they say that raful hadith raful hadith wa izalat najis wa izal wa izalat al khabath what is the meaning of it Raful hadith bringing out from the state of impurity state of impurity wa izalat najis and to purify from impurity what is the difference between those this both raful hadith for example a person okay hadith is of two types hadith is of two types hadith al akbar the major hadith major impurity Hadith al-Asgar, the minor impurity. What is major impurity? Janaba. After sexual intercourse, that is major impurity. Hayd, menstrual, that is major impurity. Nufasa, postnatal bleeding. After the woman delivers the child, there is, they have this bleeding for about 40 days or less than, less, uh, less than that. That is major impurity. And what is minor impurity? Hadith al Asgar, when you go to the call of nature, urination or defecation, you understand, right? Or madi, these things are minor impurity. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Raful Hadith, how can we come out of this impurity? Yeah. Wadu and Gusul, right? For example, I, for example, we, uh, for example, I'm in the state of Janaba. Okay. 
I saw a river. I saw a river. I saw a pond. And I need to clean myself. I need to clean myself. So I went and jumped into the pond. I jumped, went and jumped into the water. I came out. Am I purified? Why? No. No. That's answer in the second level. That's that comes in Izalut and Najasa. Yes. Not near. As I told you, Rafal Hadith, you are in the state of impurity. That is Amrun Ma'nawi. That's what Ulama they say. Amrun Ma'nawi. It's something which is not physical. You can't see it. It's something spiritual. It is something spiritual. For example, there is some dirt on your hand. There is some dirt on your dress. There is some dirt on your feet. There is some dirt on your, uh, the place where you pray. There is some dirt on your utensil that going to eat. So when you wash it, that najasa, that impurity is gone. Correct? Okay. Now there is impurity gone. Impurity gone. When you wash it. Correct? When you go to the washroom, when you urinate, you have relieved yourself and you wash your private parts. Impurity is gone. But still you are in the state of hadith impurity. How? That is known as spiritual impurity. And how we get out of this? By making wudu. By making ghusl. You understand? Not by cleaning yourself. By cleaning? No. That is known as coming out from the spiritual impurity. And cleaning yourself. Izalatun najasa. By cleaning the impurity which is on the body. Is it clear now? The difference between... Uh, the cleaning the uh, impurity and the difference between coming out of the state of impurity coming out of the state of impurity that's why the mushrikin as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran innamal mushrikuna najas because of the shirk they're najas they're impure not because of their saliva their saliva is not impure their body is not impure they're pure the Lama, they say the body of Adam the body of the Bani Adam the children of Adam whether he's a Muslim or a Kafir his body is pure it is not impure. But how he will become impure? When he is in the state of hadith, major hadith. And how do we come out of it? How do we come out of it? By making gudu and gusul. So as I told you, you go and jump into the river. It purifies you, but you are still in the state of impurity. And how do you come out of it? The way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught you. Wudu this way. Gusul this way. Cleaning this way. So that's why we are going to study inshallah in this in these chapters. So you will understand the minute matters now. Isn't it? So these things inshallah we are going to discuss. How to clean yourself. What are the waters that we have to use? Okay. If this, can we use this water? Can we use that water? Can I purify with uh, stones and you know the stones with dirt? And how do we clean ourselves? And what are the uh, uh, obligatory matters in purification? What are the obligatory matters in wudu, kusul? And what are the things that is required for a person, uh, the, the, the woman who is in her menstrual period to come out of it? What are the things that will make person to make gusul? You understand, right? All these things, inshallah, we are going to uh, study in detail. What we are going to do is not going in detail in minute matters. Ulema have written books on this, explaining this bulugal maram in six volumes, seven volumes, eight volumes. But what we are going to do is, we are going to touch those things which are required and we do not know how much time it is going to take to finish this book. But bi ta'ala, inshallah, we are going to finish this and uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us steadfastness. Now you understand the meaning of tahara. If it is time, please let me know. Okay. Another 10 minutes we will finish. Now going to Kitab tahara Okay, this book, Bulugul Maram, inshallah, it's available online as well online in the sense you can download the pdf but if you have the book handy what you can do is you can write the notes on the book itself whatever we are explaining you can write the notes why you know uh, why it is very important because at the matters of the deen it has to be recorded the matters of the deen it has to be recorded and you wouldn't record when you record it when you go back home you can recall it you can recall it and when you recall it you try to do that isn't it so by trying doing that by trying doing that you have memorized it you have uh, followed it and you have already recorded. So if you have any doubt, you will be going back to the scripture that you have written. So I ask you to come with 
pen and paper and write down inshallah uh, since it is this is the first class uh, you not you, maybe you are not aware of what is bulbul maram was is maybe you thought it's kind of random random lecture so inshallah when you come for the next class try to bring bring books and inshallah you will have notes and this notes will remain inshallah for you to teach your children your wife and your family and your friends in the future inshallah so here kitab at tahara under kitab at tahara ibn hajar rahimahullah has come up with the bab babul miyah babul miyah the book of the chapter of waters waters al ma miyah al jam al ma miyah is the plural of water what is the meaning of it can you, anybody explain what is waters can you did you hear anywhere waters you know there is only water isn't it tell me what is waters exactly exactly so there are different kinds of water there is water river water there is uh, salt sea water there is stagnant water there is pond water there is water which is stored in the tanks there is water which is stored in the buckets there are water which is flowing so what are the waters that can be utilized for purification we can't use every single water that for purification that's why the ulama rahimahullah they have uh, divided the water into thalathat aqsam into three uh, portions number 1 at tahur number 1 At-Tahur, Tahur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna anzalna alaykum ma an tahura. Verily we have sent down the water which is purifying for you. Tahur. Second thing is Tahir, which is Tahir. Third one is Najis, which is impure. So here with Tahir and Najis, you can't purify yourself. You can't purify yourself. With what you can purify? With Tahur. So inshallah we are going to study which water is Tahur, which water is tahir which water is najis okay tahur the definition of tahur is the ulama they say that wa huwa mutahhir wa huwa tahirun bi nafsihi wa mutahhirun li ghayrihi it is pure by itself the water tahur is pure by itself and it can purify others it can purify others purify you purify your clothes purify your body purify your utensils purify the place where you worship these things tahur means which which is pure by itself and it can purify others at tahir tahirun bi nafsihi wa ghayra mutahhirun bi li ghayrihi it is pure it is pure by itself but cannot purify others what is meaning of it confusing huh confusing right okay the water that you have cooked rice for example the water that you have cooked rice can you utilize that water for wudu why that water is tahir it's pure it's it's pure but you can't use it that cannot be used to purify others you can drink it you can't wash with it you can't utilize you, you can't use uh, wash utensils with it you can't wash the place where you worship but it is pure by itself okay let me give another example coffee and tea is it pure or impure no answers impure pure can you purify with tea why it's pure by itself but it can't purify others isn't it okay we have uh, sprite seven up it looks like water it has sugar content in that some chemicals content in that can you utilize that water to purify yourself to wash your face or wash your dirt on your body or wash your makan where you place worship you can't it's pure you can utilize for yourself for drinking or for anything but that cannot be that cannot purify others cannot purify others so you understand the difference between tahur and tahir let me tell you one more thing this little uh dry in the beginning little dry in the beginning but wallahi i am going to tell you inshallah the coming classes is going to be very interesting the coming class is going to be very interesting but before that we need to know what the water is 
so it will becoming class inshallah will be very interesting inshallah do not despair that you know what is dry subject knowledge is not like you know where we have stories of buzurg and things like that knowledge is this where you know what it is when you where you know the minute matters of uh, minute matters of uh, the things that you do in islam so here we know what is tahur and now we know what is tahir what now third part of the water is najas which is impure wa huwa ghayra mutahhir mutahhir bi nafsihi wa ghayra mutahhir li ghayrihi it is impure by itself neither it can pure others so now, now you can differentiate between what is tahur which is pure which is tahir which is pure but cannot uh, wash others and we know what is najis so these three things and inshallah we are going to come to in, come to uh, this this lessons in detail now going to the first uh, lesson first uh, sorry first hadith of bulugh al maram bidnillah an abi hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil bahr wa huwa tahur ma huwa hillu maytatu akhrajahu al arba'atu wa ibn abi shayba ولفظ له وصححه ابن حزيمه وترمذي ورواه مالك وشافعي واحمد the meaning of this hadith is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of the sahabi he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked ya Rasulullah we travel on the ocean we travel on the ocean and we carry little water we carry little water with us that is sweet water for drinking So if we make wudu with the sweet water then we will run out of water and we will that will cause a lot of hardship for us So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said said that fil bahri ma hu tahur the water of the ocean is pure the water of the ocean is pure and he did not stop there he further said that wa hillu maytatuhu and the dead animals in the ocean is halal for you is halal for you rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one thing you should understand look at the hikma of hikma of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for this for example somebody goes to a sheikh and asks ya sheikh what is is it halal or haram he says it is haram finish rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not answer here yes you can utilize it he didn't say that he said the water is purifying and the dead animals in that is also halal for you he gave further information because it is not only that water you take little that food also you take little right the food if you run out of the food and you traveling on the ocean long for 10 days 15 days no food you can hunt those animals in the ocean and you can eat that you can eat that subhanallah look at the fawaid that we are getting look at the the understanding the hikma of <coughs> rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't say yes he said the water is purifying for you you can make wudu from it and anything that is dead animals in th- inside it is halal for you hanafi madhab they have this misunderstanding uh, not misunderstanding they, they give dalil that you know uh, rasulullah sallam says that anything that is dead in the ocean live or dead in the ocean it's, it's pure hanafi madhab have this opinion that prawns crabs eels these are makru these are makru for them but dhahir al hadith it is very clear that anything that is not poisonous as long as it is not poisonous it is halal for us it is halal for us so this is a hadith inshallah with this we will stop here if there are any questions we will take the questions in some time and we will wind up the session and the next class inshallah we are going to discuss more in detail about the water what makes the water dirty what makes the water pure how to purify the water and we will go on to uh, finish this chapter and we will go to the chapter the book of uh, the babul aniya the book of utensils and after that we have book uh, babu izalat an najasa al ghusl wal wudu and everything inshallah we will be going to discuss uh, and i want you to spread this word about this event in this masjid and this will be beneficial for beneficial for us for me for you and uh, spread this word bring your belong- bring your people to the masjid and spread this word among uh, your circle wa jazakumullahu khairan wa barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in if you have any questions inshallah we will have the questions
بارك الله فيكم نجس is something that is visible نجس is something that is visible the question is what is the difference between حدث and نجس حدث is something أمر معنوي that you can't see but you are in the state of impurity correct for example you are in the state of janaba or for example you went to washroom your wudu is broken you cleaned your private part that is najasa removing the najas impurity from the place okay now still you are in the state of impurity that is hadith can you pray you can't pray until you make wudu so how to lift that hadith is by making wudu likewise ghusl when it is required for janaba and hayd and other things inshallah hope hope it is uh, solve the difference between hadith and najis najis is which is visible which is visible on the cloth or anything you clean it but that not that does not allow you to go and pray until you make wudu or ghusl or anything inshallah yes question from the uh, from the sister side among uh, uh, what is ruling on among the halal animals of water crocodiles and tortoise are not there yes uh, see uh, this particular thing of uh, no crocodile is haram you can't eat and tortoise you can't eat these things are which are very clear inshallah we will be studying about this uh, which are which can be eaten which cannot be eaten because there are some animals which lives in the water there are some animals which lives same time in the water as well as on the land so what is ruling for it so there are certain rulings and regulations for that inshallah we will be studying those things in detail in kitab al atima the book the chapter of food the chapter of food in that inshallah we will be talking about which is haram and which is halal and there are certain usul that kawaid uh, from which is uh, extracted from the ahadith uh, which the ulama have placed inshallah that's a separate chapter inshallah we're going to study about that inshallah Ob- obviously crocodiles we can't eat there are certain things like uh, you know to give a brief answer any animal that eats the and other things for example uh, the other things other uh, laham that cannot be eaten that cannot be eaten except the fish except the fish but those animals uh, those animals which has caught canine you know those uh, birds which has uh, the what do you say claws so there are certain things which the usul the fiqh has made you know where you can't do it there are certain animals which lives on the land and and as well as the water there are certain animals which lives most of them in the water at the same time sometime on the land so what is what are the rulings on all these things inshallah we'll be studying in bulughul maram in the coming chapters uh, for a, for any act to be accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two things are required number one ikhlas the way of uh, please tell the second one in arabic okay number one is ikhlas sincerity and second uh, second one is mutaba'a rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam following the way of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is manhaj methodology whatever is been taught by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be following that that is mutaba'a it is if it is anything besides it the deed will not be accepted rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa rajz any act or deed that is not recommended by ordered by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be rejected will be rejected so it has to be according to the sunna manhaj and it has to have the first thing the sincerity the both are very important if the act is good and you don't you're not sincere about it allah will reject it if you're sincere about it but the act the deed is wrong it will be rejected rejected so both act and sincerity should be according to uh the islam inshallah um about the different discharge in women the question is not very clear uh but inshallah we will be talking about this in uh, kitabul hayd and kitabun nafsa about all this matters about hayd and different kinds of hayd how many da- days it lasts and aqallu min al hayd akthar min al hayd what is istihada and how to purify from it and even if this continuous bleeding and how do we can we offer salah inshallah all these things inshallah will come in next 5 to 6 classes inshallah we'll be discussing about that